Hi guys, it's Ksenia. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is gonna be all about fresh fragrances, which is kind of a, a new topic on my channel. I normally don't talk about freshies here. I am a sweet perfume lover. If you've been with me since the start of my channel, you definitely know that. At the start of my channel, more than anything, I was so heavy into the sweet fragrances the sweeter the better. But I feel like my nose has definitely evolved since the start. And that's not to say I'm not into sweet fragrances anymore, okay? I love me a sweet fragrance. But today I'm gonna share with you my top 10, it's actually top 13, but my top 10 freshies. And what I mean by freshies is pure fresh fragrances. There is a little to very minimal sweetness to these fragrances. I have fragrances like Givenchy Irresistible, Versace Eros or Dolce & Gabbana Violet. These types of scents are also considered freshies, but the reason why I'm not including these fragrances, even though these are some of my all-time favorite scents ever, I'm not including scents like this that are considered fresh but have a decent amount of sweetness to them. Like today, we are purely talking fresh. Whether that freshness is coming from like this woody aspect or from a musky aspect, or maybe a little bit of floral. And some of these are even slightly fruity as well. To all of you that are also like me and you love sweet fragrances, this video may be helpful into just kind of opening you up into scents that are maybe not as sweet, but will still make you smell amazing. And you still don't have to lose the sexiness and just the strength of sweet fragrances. These scents can give that to you as well. Before we get into it, I did want to talk about the jewelry that I'm wearing. I'm really excited to be partnering up with Ana Luisa yet again for today's video. They are sponsoring this portion of the video. So thank you to them for reaching out to me again. I've worked with them in the past and I absolutely love this company. If you are looking for really good quality jewelry without breaking the bank, sustainable jewelry, jewelry that isn't gonna tarnish. Their pieces are such good quality. They're strength and humidity tested. They are tarnish resistant. I literally wear my Ana Luisa pieces like every single day. These two bracelets specifically, I've been wearing for, I don't even know, the past year. And when I say that, I mean like every single day through taking a shower, no matter what I do, I just never take them off. And they look just as good as when I got them. They have not tarnished. Like I said, I shower in them daily, wash dishes, like like everything and they're just still in perfect condition. Now, just because they are really good quality doesn't mean I recommend that you just submerge them in water every single day. I'm just saying that they're pieces that you can wear without worrying about them turning if you accidentally get them wet or anything like that. Like these pieces will last through everything. Their shipping is really fast and it's actually free for everyone buying in the US. Other than that, they do have really affordable prices that they ship to other countries as well. And they do also offer exchanges. And currently you could shop amazing high quality jewelry for up to 30% off on their website. When you get your package, they'll come in a little box like this. Everything is packaged in these little cloth pouches, which I love. I have kept every single one of these pouches that I've gotten from Ana Luisa. I love traveling with these. They're bigger pouches, like if you get a bigger item, they have like little dividers in them, which is so helpful. When I went to Europe last year, I brought a bunch of these with me and put all my jewelry in them. And they're so nice. They have magnetic closures and your pieces don't go everywhere or get tangled or anything like that. Let me get into the beautiful pieces that I got. So first things first, I love me a good bracelet. This is like a little chain bracelet. I've been loving chain jewelry. There's two little links at the front that have little crystals on them. So it just makes it look really expensive. Whereas the rest is just like a regular chain. And the name of this bracelet is called Soryaz. Next up are the earrings that I have on right now. These are called the Georgie earrings. And these are the cutest earrings ever. If you're into like dainty little huggies that have a little something to them, these are perfect. They almost kind of give me Tiffany vibes with the little heart. They actually say good karma on them and they have a little crystal. I think this came up on my Instagram, but I saw that these were apparently like a dupe to an earring that Taylor Swift was wearing. Like I think she was wearing a similar type earring to these. And lastly, I got these gorgeous earrings. They're dainty, but if you're somebody that wants to get into like more statement jewelry, but without doing too much, this is the perfect in between of just not being too much, but also it gives a little bit more than like these, for example, or I feel like these are more everyday. These are a little bit more glamorous. These are little chain link earrings and these are called the Lyra 
Lyra Lira earrings. So thank you to Ana Luisa once again for sponsoring this portion of the video. And with all that being said, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel and turn post notifications on and let's get into this video. So as I said in the beginning of this video, I failed miserably at making this a top 10. So it's gonna be a top 13 and they're all right over here. Starting off with this. Don't be fooled into thinking I used up this entire perfume. I definitely did not, although now I am absolutely in love with it. So this used to be my mom's. And then I don't remember if I stole it or if she gave it to me. I'm pretty sure she was like tired of the scent and she was like, okay, you can have it. This is Lancome Tresor in Love. When she first gave this to me, I mean, of course I thought it was a nice scent, but I started wearing it and now I'm obsessed with this scent. I actually haven't looked it up if this is still being sold in stores. I'm really hoping that it's not discontinued or anything, but this is so beautiful. Like that is the perfect description for this scent. It smells like beauty in a bottle. It's so feminine, very elegant without being too serious. Like I feel like it still has this fun vibe with this one i also failed a little bit because i know i said in the beginning that i try to do true freshies meaning there's minimal sweetness in these but i would say out of all the scents that i'm going to talk today this one has the most sweetness it's still pretty minimal i just really really wanted to include this scent because i've really truly fallen in love with it and i don't think i have a lot more to go but once it is done i'm definitely going to be repurchasing this scent it just makes me feel so feminine and so pretty this is like a princess scent it has a lot of really juicy and kind of sweet fruit so that is where all the sweetness in here is coming from which it has nectarine and it has pear and those two are very juicy sweet type of fruits both of which i really love and both of which i can kind of smell in here it has pink pepper and I'm also obsessed with pink pepper. It has violet in it, which is a really pretty floral. It has jasmine. The jasmine is not too heavy in this one. It does end off with musk and this cedar note, which I love. If I could relate this to anything, I feel like it kind of falls maybe slightly in the family of Givenchy's Irresistible. It's slightly a little bit less sweet than Irresistible, but I would say it's within that family and Irresistible I freaking love. So I think that's why I've really fallen in love with this one as well. Next up is Miracle by Lancome. Let me just say this perfume was hot in Greece last year. When we went there last year, my aunt was using this, my cousin was using this, and even in malls, like I feel like I could smell the scent constantly. Never did I think I would like this scent for some reason i always thought this was too mature but at the same time i had never actually smelled it and given it a chance until i went there last year and the second to last day of my trip i went into the store to go and find it and buy it and i couldn't find it so i had to actually buy this when i came back into the states another very pink floral smelling scent it actually has lychee in the top notes which i'm not always a huge fan of because i find that note to be a little too tart at times and i'm not always the biggest fan of like sour type perfumes like, every time i see lychee in perfumes i always think of delina this smells nothing like delina at all and to be honest i don't really smell the lychee in here at all i smell like a bright fruity vibe but not so much lychee this has pepper so not even pink pepper this straight up has pepper in it so it has that spice again but it works so well with the pink florals in here it's just so elegant and again you get this musky base and it also has jasmine in the base this is a pretty heavy floral i feel like if you're not into floral florals i don't know how much you would love this i don't know if it's the nostalgia that makes me really love this scent but if you are also a sweet fragrance lover and you've ever smelled this please come back and let me know if you like it or not. I'm very curious because I'm a sweet lover for the most part and I love this. Next up is Shiseido Zen. This is a very clunky bottle, not really ideal for traveling. And I'm so mad because I dropped this. I think I literally dropped it in a video, like when I first hauled it or something like that and I broke it and now, like the nozzle is here, but when it sprays, it sprays like over here and it's just like shoots, look. Like it literally sprays sideways. It's so bad and it doesn't even spray. It just like squirts out. It's not a vibe. I don't like that I did that. I don't know how to fix it. I'm very mad about that, but I still use it. It just annoys me every time I do. But anyways, we're not here to expose my clumsiness. Let's talk about the actual scents because Shiseido Zen 
really is that girl. If you've ever tried Coco Mademoiselle and you're one of those people like myself that find it too mature, too serious, too patchouli heavy, then you're gonna want to get Shiseido Zen because it is exactly the name. There's a lot happening in here. A lot of fruits, a lot of florals, a very musky, cedar-like, just kind of deep woody sort of base. For more of a fresh scent, I find this so sexy. Way sexier than I ever found Coco Mademoiselle. Like I said, Coco Mademoiselle was just a little too serious for me. This is very much every day and this is so well blended where it has so many notes in it but I don't really pick anything out specifically in here other than this woody sort of vibe. It has this patchouli vibe. I know patchouli is definitely hit or miss. It's not too much in this. It doesn't smell muddy or dirty or too earthy or anything like that. If you're trying to get into fresh perfumes and you want that sexy vibe still and you think that you're gonna have to lose that if you buy a fresh perfume, you need to get your hands on Shiseido Zen because with this scent, you're not losing sexiness at all. Another big favorite of mine, the writing is like almost completely worn off. I brought this with me last year. I feel like that's when you really know you love even like a makeup product, a clothing item, just really anything, you know you love it if you're gonna bring it with you wherever you go. And I feel like every time I go somewhere, this is just a scent I always want to bring with me. Of course, I bring like 20,000 other more sweet perfumes. But if I want just a standard, easy to wear, not boring, just easy to pick up and wear on any day where you know it's not going to offend anybody, but you're going to smell amazing, this is the scent that I grab for it. This is a all floral, really, fragrance other than just like a musky note and a cashmere note that's in the base. Everything is all florals in here. There's no fruits in here, nothing like that, but I swear I get a melon vibe to this. I don't know why. Oh, this is so good. And you know when you bring your perfumes on vacation and you come back, you can smell the vibe of that vacation. I brought this with me over there last year. I can just smell the memories basically every time I smell this. It's unlike anything that I feel like I would typically like, but it's a scent I always gravitate to. If I could lose all my perfumes right this second and I had to build up my fragrance collection all over again and I had to start with just like a top 10, this would be one of the top 10 that I would buy like 100%. So let's talk about probably one of my most highly complimented perfumes ever and that is another 13 by Le Labo. This perfume could easily fly under the radar. I don't even know what it is about this perfume that just it's like almost like a pheromone not even a perfume but just like a pheromone in in a bottle basically. When you smell this you almost feel like you don't smell much. I don't know how to explain it. This is one of those like molecular woody type scents that just kind of mixes with your chemistry and it ends up smelling different on each person. Basically like not a perfume by Julia has a gun molecule one by eccentric molecules that kind of category of fragrances every time I spray this on I'm just like I just want to stay in the scent bubble I feel like after a few hours I go a little bit nose blind to this scent but everyone around me can smell it I could spray this on in the morning and I get compliments at nighttime wearing this scent I already said this in a video but I literally got a compliment going to get a wax and I was wearing this. I actually had it layered with Baccarat Rouge but I was wearing a lot more of this than Baccarat Rouge and she told me like you smell so good. She literally said verbatim that I smell like a very signature type scent. Like the scent literally blew her away and she had to write it down because she wanted to get it for herself. And speaking of scents like that that just kind of mesh with your skin, that is a definition of Glossier U. I love Glossier U. This is a very peppery type of scent, super unique, and another huge, huge complimented perfume. There's something about these types of perfumes, like these types of scents that just kind of work with your chemistry. There's something about these that people compliment more than anything. You could be wearing the most expensive perfume ever. Now, the level another 13 is pretty pricey, but this is not. You could get this for under 100 bucks, I think it's like 60 something dollars. Uh, you can get this at Sephora. But I'm just saying like there's something about scents like these that just perform so well and they're huge crowd pleasers. I've gotten so many compliments on Glossier U from strangers, friends, family. It's very long lasting and I am like almost halfway through this bottle. I'm like right here with it right now. And I hate that they don't have a bigger bottle of this. Like I wish they would have a 100 ml bottle. I think this only comes in a 1.7 fluid ounce, but 
I definitely wish they had a bigger bottle because this is one of those scents where you can get away with over spraying it. They both have this Umbroxan sort of vibe, but these two are very different. This one I feel like is a little bit more upbeat. It has a violet note, it has umbrette, it has pink pepper, it has Umbroxan. So it has a little bit more like notes going on in it where I feel like this literally just smells like this molecular woody sort of scent. Although very much of a crowd pleaser, Maybe if you're just getting into these types of scents, I think Lassia U would be a little bit easier to get into, if that makes sense. Next up, I'm only showing this because I don't have the original of this, but I have many dupes of it. So this is just the first of the dupes that I have that I grabbed. This is Finery Before the Rainbow. And this is a dupe for Wood Sage and Sea Salt by Jo Malone, which I love but I haven't picked it up. I was very close to picking it up because the first time I ever smelled it, I fell in love with it. It is such a good scent. The scent of it, I don't think anybody could dislike, but it doesn't last. And Jo Malone fragrances are not cheap. They're like $150. And if you're paying that price point, you wanna guarantee not only that it smells good, but that it performs good. Because if you're paying 150 and then your scent comes off in like an hour, that's unacceptable. Luckily, there is a lot of dupes to Wood Sage and Sea Salt. This being one of them, and I know Dossier also has one. I don't remember the name at the top of my head. Either one of them, either the Dossier version or this. I know Dossier is at Walmart now as well. Like you could get it in store, so that may be easier to come across. But Finery also has their version. This is Before the Rainbow. Finery is a Target exclusive brand. Oh, this smells so good. This is exactly like wood sage and sea salt if that makes any sense it's woody it's salty has an aquatic vibe this has salt bergamot and oak moss and even though that oak moss may sound kind of intimidating it's actually very subtle in here it's a really really likable scent that's all i can really say it's very fresh it's one of those scents where you freshly get out of the shower and you just want to keep smelling like that fresh out of the shower scent this is what you're gonna wanna go for. And it also has this really expensive vibe about it. It smells like money. I think another reason why I love Before the Rainbow and Wood Sage and Sea Salt and the Dossier version is because they remind me a lot of Mac Turquatic, which is the next scent that I have in this lineup. So I have a little version of Max Aquatic right now because I went through my other one that I had that was bigger than this. And then I just bought the little one. I kind of regret getting the little one to be honest because this is one of my favorite scents. I've been using this since high school, like freshman year or sophomore year of high school. Max Aquatic is citrusy, it's cedary, it's aquatic as you would assume. And most of all, it's sexy. Like how often do you come across fresh out the shower scents that are also really, really sexy? This is it. This may be even sexier than some of my really sweet scents and just perfumes that are more conventionally sexy. This is even sexier than some of those. This is a total beach babe kind of a scent. Surfer girl. If you want a compliment getter, if you want a scent that's not offensive, you know everyone will love it, this is the scent to go for. I highly recommend Max Aquatic. I actually saw this at Ulta the other day, so... I may need to go and stop by because I didn't know Ulta had these. I know Ulta carries MAC, but they didn't have fragrances for a while and I saw it there the other day. So I'm, I'm gonna need to get me a bigger bottle. Next for another freshie that I absolutely love and this has truly stood the test of time because this has been out for a while and this scent gives me so much nostalgia because my mom used to use this like in the early 2000s. I used to always watch my mom get ready and she always had this on her vanity and it was my favorite thing. After she left the room, I would go and like, spray it all over me. This is a Moschino I Love Love. This has very often been compared to Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, which I actually recently decluttered my light blue. It'll be coming up in a declutter video very shortly. I'm actually filming a bunch of videos today, so I don't know within the time frame of when this video will be up, although I'm pretty sure the declutter should already be up before this video. So anyways, I decluttered my light blue because I had this scent and also another one that I actually have in this lineup as well that are similar to the vibe of light blue, but in my opinion, better. And this is one of them. Light blue is more citrusy in the sense it's more like lemony. This is more citrusy in the sense that it's more orangey. So it's citrusy, but it has a sweet kick to it. This has grapefruit, orange, and lemon. And I'm just picking out the notes that I really can smell in here, which is those three. And then other than that, I smell cedar and this Tanaka wood. There's other notes within the middle notes that are more floral oriented. 
I don't find this that floral. Like, of course, they're adding some sort of element in here, but nothing that you can really pick out. So more than anything, it's just citrusy and woody, which I love. And it just works so well in this. This fragrance reminds me of like going on vacation, like just the summertime. It's so bright. It's so vibrant. This is 20,000 times better than light blue. If you're even considering getting light blue, get this first. I really love the bottle. I'm pretty sure it was made to imitate the look of Olive from Popeye because it looks like her if you can kind of see the silhouette of it. So that's a little fun fact about this scent, but this is so good. I highly recommend this. And you can often find this at like Marshalls, TJ Maxx, and those types of stores. And it's like 20 bucks, 30 bucks at most. Speaking of the whole light blue type scent, if you want that kind of vibe, I highly recommend either getting I Love Love by Moschino, which I just mentioned, or this, if you're considering light blue. Don't get light blue and get either one of these two fragrances because I promise you they're gonna give you the same vibe, but they're just better, they're more unique. They give you just more to work with. I feel like light blue has been done a lot and overworn at this point. If you love it, you love it, and it's still a really good scent, but I just feel like these scents will give you just a little bit more. This is Calvin Klein Women. It has a very strange bottle. Like this is the cap. It's just a very large cap, kind of weird. I don't like bottles that are like really big like this because they're clunky and you can't really travel with them. It's just like, like what is this? If you're one of those people that has strayed away from light blue because you find it to be more on the masculine side, but maybe you kind of like the scent, you just think it's a little too masculine leaning for you, then you're gonna wanna get Women by Calvin Klein because it's way, way, way more feminine, but will still give you that citrusy, woody type of unique, vibrant quality that light blue has. This also has a lot more notes in it. It has eucalyptus and I think that is like a standout note in here. It doesn't smell like straight up like eucalyptus because I feel like that would be a little bit too much. But it's just this perfect amount in here where I feel like it just elevates it. I think that eucalyptus makes this smell more refreshing, more high quality. And I've always loved so many Calvin Klein scents, but I think lately, more than ever, I've realized that I have so many Calvin Klein scents in my collection and I love them. I love Calvin Klein perfumes. They're really affordable and they're really good. And a lot of them are also very, very unique. Like you go and buy a Calvin Klein perfume and it's way more unique than most designers you can find. This is also a little bit peppery. Of course, it's citrusy. It's very woody and it also has Ambroxan in the base. So it has that molecular woody quality about it. It's another one of those scents where it just works really well with your body chemistry. So next up for a very musky freshie. This is musk all the way. It's all about the musk in this scent and that is Narciso by Narciso Rodriguez. This is probably the most expensive smelling perfume I have in my entire collection. Like when I smell this, I think of rich. I think of just money. It just gives me you live in a mansion vibes with the beachfront view. It's very powdery, it's very musky, but it's not musky in like a B.O. musk type of way. It's a very clean musk with almost like a sweetness to it. This has a middle note of musk and the base is all woody. I don't find this that woody. I feel like the other scents that I talked about and described them as being woody, they're way woodier than this one. I think the musk in here definitely dominates over everything else. And this actually has gardenia, which is probably one of my least favorite florals. Least favorite notes in general, but especially in the floral world. I've always found gardenia just too mature smelling, too serious for me. Just not my vibe. But there's something about this scent and even with the musk, I'm also not the biggest musk fan. It depends on the way it's done. I think everything has been done right in this scent because I truly enjoy the musk. I enjoy the gardenia, which is weird for me to say because I never usually do, especially when it's a big part of the fragrance, which I feel like this is. Next up, I have Pure Poison by Dior. I have come around on this scent so much. Not that I didn't like it, but lately I've been wearing this so much and loving every second of this perfume. This smells like clean laundry in the best possible way. It's so smooth that you can't even pick out any certain notes other than like when you smell it, you're like, oh, this smells like laundry. It even has like the warmth of laundry. You know when you open up your dryer door and your laundry is clean and it has this 
warm smell to it and it smells so good from all those delicious detergents and softeners and dryer sheets and all those kind of product smells that is what this smells like and i know i've said so many times that i'm just not into perfumes that, that smell like clean laundry or even like soap or body wash because it just defeats the purpose of a perfume for me like why am i spending a hundred dollars to smell like what my laundry already smells like or what i already smell like coming out of the shower you know like i want something different but this is an exception because it smells like clean laundry in the best possible way there's gardenia again in here but as i said earlier it's so smooth that it doesn't stand out to me it's not too sharp to my nose like you'll find the more you get into fragrances that if you find that you don't like a specific note you may find that you like it in other perfumes it just depends on how it's done and how it's mixed with other notes it has to be done right basically and this is done right more than anything i will describe this as a clean gel down to the last two cents let's talk about burberry body this is burberry body tender which is a flanker to the original burberry body i decluttered my original burberry body because i found it too serious it was very soapy and clean smelling but it just had this mature kick to it i didn't gravitate towards i was barely wearing it so i just decluttered it this scent i also discovered in greece at the exact same time where i discovered my miracle by lancome this was a scent that my cousin was wearing and she would keep this in her bag and just spray it all the time and every time she would spray it i would just be hit with the most amazing scent and i asked her what she had and she showed me this i sprayed it on me and it just worked so well it smelled so good and this was also impossible to find over there i could not find it anywhere it was out of stock in so many stores and she told me she had to like order it online over there because she couldn't find it so i thought i was never going to be able to find this and then i came back to the states and i was randomly at a tj maxx and i stumbled over to the perfume section and i see this I was like, what are the odds that I see this right after I was just interested in it over freaking in Greece, like other side of the world. I snatched it up so quick. It was affordable. It was like 30 something dollars. I wore it the other day. This smells again, very elegant, but it's not as mature and serious as the other one. This is more youthful. It's more feminine. It just has more of like a pink flirty vibe to it it's way flirtier than the original body tender is the perfect name for it because it is a softer scent for the most part it's fruity it has a green vibe to it and it's just that perfect fresh and clean smell it smells like the natural musk of a woman this is a scent where i find sexy it's like flirty and sexy just so freaking beautiful i love very very body tender if you can look out and find this in any discount store don't even hesitate pick this and up. then the last scent that i have for this video is pink canyon by skylar i absolutely love this if you're into fresh woody scents it kind of falls into the category of like wood sage and sea salt by joe malone max turquatic but more so on the woodiness and not so much on the citrus aquatic it has a little bit of citrus in it but way just woodier it has kind of like a short-lived grapefruit no it doesn't last too much more so just in the opening but more than anything it's just a heavy cedaring musky type of scents and i know there was a lot of that in this video so i'm sorry if it was a little bit repetitive but that's just what i go for in my freshies so that is it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you again to ana luisa for sponsoring today's video don't forget to check out their website and see all the pieces that they have all the links are going to be in my description box so check that out that is it for me today please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll see you guys in my next video bye